everyone. Thanks for checking out today's video. I am going to be making blueberry jam. I harvested the berries from our bushes earlier in the summer and I just rinsed them, put them in freezer bags and left them for a cooler winter day to make the jam. I have found that picking the berries is absolutely a full-time job and I don't have time to make the jam, nor do I want to in the blazing heat of the summer months. So this has just been how I've done it in the past and it has worked perfectly. I'll just walk you through my process for making the jam. Again, it's, this is not a tutorial. It's just how I do things and figured I'd make a video of it. The very first thing that I do when I know that I'm going to be making jam is I pull out my bags of frozen berries first thing in the morning to make sure that they have time to thaw before I'm ready to make the jam. The second thing that I do is get all of my jam jars in the dishwasher and get those started and I put them on the heated dry that way they're nice and hot, they're sanitized and ready to go. While the dishwasher's going, I get out everything that I am going to need for making jam. Once you start cooking the jam, this process goes really quickly. So you wanna make sure that every single thing you need is going to be ready and I guess you could say at your fingertips. So I have the sure gel, that's the pectin. I have the lids and the rings, and I'll show you in a minute what I do with the lids and the rings. My funnel, this is what I use to grab the jam jars when they're hot out of the water bath. I've got my sugar ready. Again, I make sure that I pre-measure my sugar so when it's time to put it into the hot fruit, I can just dump the pre-measured amount in. Now in the summer, before I packaged my berries, I did rinse them, did the best job I could picking stems and leaves out of them, but I just like to go through a second time and double check that I've got all of those stems out and that they're not gonna end up in the yummy jam. Okay, so these berries are still just partially thawed, but what I do is I dump part of them onto a baking sheet, kind of spread them out, and like a berry like this, not so great, so we're gonna put that one aside. And then I just go through each berry, kind of double checking that we don't have any little bits of stem or leaf or anything like that on them. So I would highly encourage you, after you see all of the work that goes into making jam, from picking the berries to, the, I guess just the entire process, next time you go to a farmer's market, you should be happy to only pay $12 for a jar of jam. I actually think when it's all said and done, I probably lose money on this process. The cost of the jars have gone up drastically. Sugar has gone up. So see, here's one with a little stem on it, but I'm not crazy about that berry either, so we're just gonna set that guy aside too. This is my very first time making blueberry jam. I always made raspberry because I had this amazing raspberry patch at our home in Montana. And now that I have moved to Arkansas, I don't yet have raspberry bushes, but I do have a pretty good stand of blueberry bushes. So blueberry jam it is. Okay, rather than bore you to death and film this entire process, 
I'll just catch back up with you when the next phase of my project starts. So you can see, out of the one gallon Ziploc baggie, there was a leaf and a few pieces of stem. I just don't want that to be in the finished product, as I'm sure nobody does. So, the next thing you're gonna do is mash your berries. So for a batch of jam, we need to have four cups of prepared fruit. They're still just enough frozen that they're a little bit hard to do. Ooh, we don't want that bowl flipping over. That's the other thing I would say. Make sure, whether you're making blackberry, raspberry, blueberry, the juice from this gets everywhere. Wear dark clothes and make sure that you have a wet towel or rag to kind of wipe up any spills because it will stain if you don't wipe it up right away. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put these lids inside each of the rings. Again, you just wanna do as much of this prep work as you can because once that jam is ready to go, everything moves very, very quickly. As you can see, there are my prepared berries and pre-measured. That's four cups of blueberries. And my sugar is pre-measured. That's four cups of sugar. I do just use the recipe that's on the insert in the sure gel box. You can also Google that and it gives you the exact same recipe there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we will take these rings and I have a pot of water over here and we will just drop these in here. Once we get a little bit closer to making the actual jam, I'll turn these on and I'll boil this. That's gonna help soften that rubber seal as well as sanitize the lids. Okay, so here we have the crushed and prepared berries in the pan. I've got the heat turned on. I have added a half a teaspoon of butter. Sounds odd, but that really does help to reduce the foaming that you sometimes get when you make jam. Now we're just gonna add a packet of fruit pectin. Get that stirred in there really well. And we are going to heat this until it comes to a full rolling boil. That's the kind of boil that you cannot stir down. Once we get it to the full rolling boil, we're going to add the sugar and then we are going to cook it for exactly one minute once it comes back to a boil. Okay, we have the blueberries up to a full rolling boil. Now we're going to add the four cups of sugar. Get that incorporated in there really well. And then we're gonna wait for this to come to another full rolling boil. Oh, it smells so yummy. Okay, we are now back up to a full rolling 
oil. And I've set the timer for one minute. We'll let this boil for one full minute before we take it off the heat. You have to be careful with this and make sure that your pot is deep enough because this mixture in here right now is scalding hot and it does splatter and splash so you have to take care of it. You don't get your hands burned. I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. Just a few seconds left before we turn it off. This is removed from the heat. We are going to immediately ladle it into our sterilized jars. Again, be careful because this will splatter and it's very, very hot. You want to fill these jars within about a quart, within about a quarter of an inch of the top. Just going to pour it. Hopefully, be able to scrape all the excess. So this particular batch, it looks like I yielded three full pint jars and only a partial on the fourth, but that's okay. So the next thing that we need to do is to seal these. But first, you want to take a damp cloth and make sure that you clean off the edges of each of the jars so that we get a good seal, even with the funnel, you tend to get a little bit of splatter. Make sure you use your tongs when you do this because those have been in boiling water, so they're gonna be very, very hot. And these you just wanna finger tighten. You don't want them to be crazy tight. The jar's hot. And next up, we'll just put these in the water bath can. Okay, I'm getting ready to start my second batch, and I just wanted to mention that between batches, I do completely wash and dry all of the utensils, the pot, everything that I used from the previous batch. The other thing is I will water bath can all of these, but since I only got three pints from my first batch, I'm going to wait and do a double batch in the water bath can. Save some time, save some energy. Okay, I'll check back in when we go to put things into the water bath. Okay, so we have six jars of jam prepared, ready to go into the water bath can. This is that I use because the jars are really hot and the water bath is very hot. So what I do is I try to put them opposite of each other 
as I go around the circle to kind of even things out. We want, once we drop this rack into the boiling water, we want it to be about an inch or two inches higher than the top of the jars. And if it's not, then what I'll do is I've got that boiling water from the lids and rings and I'll just add that to the water bath canner. And again, pot holders because this is going to be hot. Just unhook it and gently lower it in. And I've got easily two inches above the jars. So we're gonna put the lid on and we're going to water bath can for 10 minutes. Alexa, stop. Okay, our 10 minutes are up on the water bath canner. Again, be super careful because this is really hot. We're just going to raise the rack back up. Use our grabber. Set it down. I don't know if you can hear it, but the lids are already starting to seal. That's the best sound for anyone who ever does canning or jams. That way you know that the seal has made contact and you're good to go. Okay, after about six hours, I am finally done and have my last batch of blueberry jam in the water bath. I ended up with about 20 pints and I think about a dozen half pints of jam. So now for the ultimate test, I always just keep some extra if I don't have quite enough to fill a jar. I keep one that I don't water bath so that I can just eat it. Look at how yummy that, that looks. It ended up, there's still quite a bit of whole berries in there. So let's taste it and see how it is. Mm. Oh boy, that's good. I suppose I could put it on a piece of toast or something, but yeah, it's okay to eat it like this if you want. Mmm, that's yummy. I am so excited about this. All right, well, before the timer goes off for that last batch that's in the water bath, I'll wrap things up. One thing I did want to mention, after your jars have cooled just a little bit and you hear that seal pop, then make sure you go back and tighten the rings one more time. Don't do it when they're still too hot because you'll burn yourself, but just go in and double check them. So if you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.